Hey guys, Greg here. Just picked up an interesting album I want to show you guys. One of the most unique albums that Miles Davis ever put out. And it's called, I can't pronounce this in French. Let's try. A Censure pour le Chaffaut. I don't know, I can't, I can't pronounce French. The English translation makes no sense to me. Lift to the scaffold. And uh, for years I didn't know what that meant either. Turns out that's British, and if you translate that to American, it's elevator to the gallows. Elevator to like the gallows where they hang somebody. So this is a, this is a pretty cool film noir movie from 1957, directed by Louis Malle and uh, I don't think it's available in English, maybe in an overdub. But this is a unique record because Miles Davis, it's nothing like anything he's done before. Um, it's unique for a couple reasons. Uh, totally improvised soundtrack. Let's get a better shot. There we go. Totally improvised soundtrack. He went into the studio and uh, sat, you know, totally unprepared. No score was written and he uh, watched the movie and played music to the, to the movie on the screen for a couple days. And the other thing that's unique about it is that it's really very much Miles Davis all over the place. Most of the classic Miles Davis records you like are like Miles Davis Quintet or Miles Davis Quartet, where he assembles and curates an amazing group of world-class players. These are good players, but this is like a backup band with Miles Davis. So really, you're hearing a lot of miles all over it. There's other good instrumentalists too. Um, the saxophone player, uh, Barney Willen, this kind of maybe launched his career a little bit and then he did some more film noir uh, movie soundtracks. He did one with, uh, well, he did a movie called Dangerous Liaisons, however you say that in, Fr in French. And Art Blakey did a version of that with him. And I think Monk also did something with that. I gotta get my hands on Dangerous Liaisons. That sounds like it's going to be a cool film noir soundtrack also. Uh, so this whole concept of improvising music, I mean, Miles improvises all the time, obviously, but going into the studio unprepared with nothing written, maybe this, maybe this album from 1947 foreshadows what came later in 1959, which is Kind of Blue, Miles' most famous record. And they went into the studio pretty much cold. They had sketched out some you know, basic song ideas, but they had not rehearsed. They just went into the studio and boom, created what is considered the greatest jazz album of all time. That's just two years later than this. So maybe this record warmed him up to the idea of going to the studio pretty cold, unprepared. Prior to this, he spent, you know, seven or eight years doing a lot of albums on the Prestige label. The series with like Walkin', Steamin', relaxing all that stuff with the uh, first great quintet with uh, with John Coltrane and Red Gar well Red Garland and yeah those guys but those were all just American standard tunes they would just go in and you know here's the chart you guys know this tune boom record it a couple takes it's a great great series of albums but this is kind of at the tail end of that uh, this record uh, is not an original obviously look how nice and shiny it is this is on a label called Speaker's Corner, which I really didn't know much about. Uh, turns out Speaker's Corner is an audiophile grade, all analog label from Germany. They have tons and tons of releases that we just don't see that often. This is the first one I've ever owned by Speaker's Corner. They got a lot of classical and some jazz and audiophiles kind of consider them the same level of, um, you know, like Music Matters and uh, What's the other one? Analog Sounds or Mobile Fidelity. Uh, so supposedly they put that level of care into their recordings and remasterings, original master tapes and all that stuff. So, wait a minute. This is the cover that Speaker's Corner put this out on. Very abstract, colorful uh, artwork. I can't figure out who did this art. Kind of a very stylized trumpet with some valves there. It's signed by G. Andrews, but I can't figure out who that is. If any of you guys know who G. Andrews is. But the cool black and white film noir is really a great photo. And it's a gatefold. It's got some photos from the actual recording session. 
Uh, the art, the actress's name is Jean or Jean Moreau. So there's the beautiful actress getting an earful of Miles. He's injecting some jazz right into her brain, apparently. And then uh, there they are as well. So she apparently was at the recording session and just kind of hung out with the guys and helped him relax and served him some snacks. That's kind of cool. Uh, but it was recorded over a, a two-day session, December 4th and 5th in 1957. They really just went into the studio, put up the movie, watched it, and improvised their hearts out. So this record contains all of the uh, takes. The original record that came out, I think, edited it down to just the final takes. But this has two or three takes of a lot of the tunes, and they're all in French. Uh, this just came out for Record Store Day, I think the last year, and I almost picked it up. Sort of glad I didn't, because that was a three record set of 10 inches. How much flipping are you going to do? you got to get through three records to get through this much music, so I'm glad there's only one flip. But I saw that for 45 bucks at the Record Store the other day. Almost picked it up. This has got the nice Fontana label on it. And... Uh, it does not say Speaker's Corner on it anywhere, so I'm led to believe that this artwork on the front actually identifies it as a Speaker's Corner release, but it only says Fontana, so that's a little uh, little strange, but nice quality vinyl. I got this for a great deal. I'm almost ashamed to say I got this for 20 bucks on Discogs, uh, where a lot of Speaker's Corner stuff is going for 40, 50, 100 bucks. Uh, especially the jazz. So, film noir. I might show you a clip. I'll keep talking though. Uh, the whole film noir aesthetic of the moody jazz with a lot of, you know, a lot of space, slow tempos. Uh, that is just so perfect for Miles Davis's phrasing, as you can imagine. All right, let's look at some of the video here. Classic film noir. Beautiful French woman walking around the streets of Paris to some cool jazz tunes. Moody, shadowy, light, dark, black and white, classic 50s. Quit talking, Greg. Just enjoy the film. Okay. There's about a two minute clip of the trailer on uh, YouTube, which is what this is. So, anyway, oh, I got another record that kind of fits into that mold. It's not Miles Davis, but I picked this up at a thrift store recently. And uh, another French film, black and white, film noir. I can't pronounce any of this stuff. I don't know what it means, but it's a pretty cool record for a buck. And uh, so uh, let me know what you think, guys. I got my eyes out for other film noir records. Tell me what else I should get out there. Oh, there's the Herbie Hancock one that Mazzy showed a while ago. Uh, I gotta get my hands on that one. There's the Art Blakey one I mentioned. Let me know what other cool records, film noir, soundtracks, etc. And uh, thanks for watching, guys. Check you later.